Hello, greetings from wherever you may find yourself in time and space. So let me teach you about the basic concept of how a computer is made and worked out and how the technology war on computers is about to unfold in some way. I may look like shit, but it's midnight and I had a really great day yesterday. <laughs> And uh, I fell asleep early, so I look like shit, never mind that. So I have my other whiteboard again. And let me tell you about how computers were made up and how they came to be. <laughs> so, you know, we all know if you are a little bit of a digital freak or a computer freak. Excuse me. The point about simple computers and computer language in the total basics are, of course, the zeros and the ones. And let me draw two. So, if you have a basic transistor or a basic communication line, they are all zeros and ones, nothing more. A, a node or a cable can only make one or zero, stream or no stream. So even the language between the layers in the computer who are made up later than the ancient computers who already had bulbs eh, and made the progress and the procession because one of the first computers needed a room about the size of a church maybe or even a small church. And that was done like, of course, a very elaborated work for a big computer that could do if essentially nothing. But, of course, if you take it to the basics, let's say this is a bulb, this is also a bulb, this bulb is out and this one is on. So, you take that over the line, send it through and they can see on the other line at the other end, okay, this bulb is off, this one is on and so forth. So, later on, they could translate it with even before the 1800s in and what they call it, telegraph. Now you have the program Telegram, and that's the name for the uh, lines that they could progress text over lines. And they had their little translations devices, and that's the basics about internet. And we all know that with the big solar flares, I don't know what they call it again, I lost the name, but it fried all the telegraph lines in the States and in Europe. I don't know, I haven't come across anything about that um, thing that happened in the 1800s where the solar flares uh, you know it has a special name that event and uh, it really devastated the communications within the states then back but never mind that let's go further on so i learned that uh, in the technical and practical part about making computers you have to of course program these things to go on and off without you even doing anything you know and that's the thing about computers they are made up to make the people or the human life easier and pr process tasks to make them uh, give answers and in that if there's a fallacy whatever sorts like with all the computer languages that are made up and made totally shit. But of course, efficiency is a progress thing that also needs time and elaborates rethinking about things. But in the end, when you know how to do one and zero in the basics on a computer, you say, okay, we progress, we make a better computer, and now we are here with uh, more RAMs and shit like that. Never mind how they all process it. But there's this little thing about Cliff High said about time slicing. So I had to really think about that and what he meant with time slicing. He said, I ah, never mind, I, I, I won't get into that, he said, and he passed on. So the time slicing part is, you know, time is a constant, a constant. It's always continuing, progressing further and think. So the computer is progressing or not progressing, it's on or off. And you say, okay, you can time slice when it's off, the, the slice is there. Okay, 22 trillion a second. Let me give it another puff. All right, so we progress 22 trillions and the conscience is a constant. 
Ah, okay, we have a constant in the conscience and we have a constant in the time. So, how do you time slice? Let's think about it in real time improvisation. And I say, as a Belgian Bauhaus master, we time slice with electricity, magnetism, and consciousness. So, and the energy I give positive, negative, on or off. So, we have positive, negative, on or off. And in the middle, we have quantum. Okay. So, now. You have a full computer, and let me give you a little anecdote about how to hack any system. Any system. Okay. So, we have Linux. Open source. Do you need to hack open source? Oh, it's open. Voila. We have Apple. Okay. They have their protection inside um, mechanisms. We have the Windows Defender. I don't know much about Apple. Macintosh. It used to be Macintosh. Never mind Apple. We have Windows. The most used system on the client side. Linux. The most used system on the server side. So what do you do as a client? You have your Windows. And the anecdote goes, I was with a friend in, back in 2015. And I had a little uh, dual core laptop. It uh, wasn't much, 2015, but Windows 10 was already on it. And I was a bit like sad. I looked at Windows 10 and I said, this thing is shit compared to Windows 7. Windows 7 is much more stable. It's much more elaborated and much more ways to do much more things. So, okay, I said, I'd rather have my Windows 7 on my desktop. And that Windows 10 on that laptop, it's just a little piece of laptop, okay. And I went on. And in 2015, I took my laptop outside, it was nice weather, probably even a little before autumn. And then I went with the laptop to town, and suddenly I sat down at the desk, uh, just a picnic table in, in the open air, it was already dark. My friend was like going nuts. And there was two older women there, maybe sisters, like a bit of gossiping. They're already sitting at the table. I sat on the left side, I opened my computer. And what do you do as a, a person who goes with computers? You start to reverse engineer the thing. Because the Windows 10 back then in 2015, I went through all the options and all the permissions and all the, you know what? in all the things you can do with maps and per permissions and accountings and directions and um, making people access files, making uh, whatever else you have. Um, uh, like, uh, I, what do you call it? I lost it now, uh, encryption. So the encryption of files also, uh, whatever else you have, you can, you can, and you must be able as a person on the client side to reverse engineer the whole system. So it took me about uh, between half an hour, at least half an hour, maybe even up more than an hour to reverse the whole Windows 10 back in 2015. So when I did the whole reverse engineering of Windows 10, I had a flat system and the flat system was there. I don't know, it was powerful in the way because on the most important side from a computer is of course the connectivity with the internet. And what I was doing back then, while I was reverse engineering the whole computer, was open a whole bunch of IPv4 ports or um, IP addresses. So I took uh, between the A and the D that goes within the subnet mask. I opened uh, about four million or four, you know, uh, about four million um, IP addresses at least. So I took the first two, a, a, um, the first two as a 192 and uh, another basic in the nut mask, 255, 25500, uh, open in between. And then you leave the computer open with the whole flat system reversed engineered. And then I thought about, okay, this thing is way too powerful. I just have to let it, I don't know. I, Took it back to my garage, I left my door open and I hoped somebody would steal it and that's what happened because that thing for me at least was way too powerful with all those open addresses on it. 
but that's the thing with IPv4. You can always reverse engineer a computer on either any system, but the Linux uh, goes a little bit different about configurations, about connectivity on IP addresses. And as a server, well, you dis assign other ways uh, to make your uh, computer get an address from a DHCP server. Well, never mind that. So this is really progress shit. I, I know a lot of people already logged out or uh, go away from this video. It's already 10 minutes in. So that's the way you go to really hack your system, give yourself a whole bunch of IP addresses. So that computer went around somewhere with somebody and if it got destroyed, those IP addresses are already split up uh, by other nodes that pick up the NAT system on NATs and they get over divided. And, you know, uh, IPv6, okay, you have more um, access and control and uh, oversight uh, with, uh, about how a network spreads with IPv6. So it's more regulated, it's, it's more re restrained than IPv4. IPv4 can, it's just, you can be a total ghost on IPv4. If you have one NAT uh, 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 in front of your default node, nobody can find you. Really, nobody can find you. It, except when they have an inside node on your network. But as soon as a NAT4 IPv4 is set up before, after, uh, before your default gateway, and in between there has to be much really anything, nobody can hack your system, man, you know. Uh, I'll leave it at that. I uh, hope it's totally crazy, this video, of course, in the middle of the night after a nice day. And I was really talking fast, but never mind that. Um, I'm like done with computers. I'm done with computers. You know, uh, the, the medical system totally failed and busted up. The bank system busted up. Everybody knows where we're at. You know, uh, so we have to not reverse engineer systems. But I propose as Belgians uh, that we adopt Windows 7. And we start like the Koreans did with Linux. Uh, they said, OK, we only take Linux in South Korea. And of course, here in Belgium, you have your own choices about what system you take. But as a people's person, I would say adopt Windows 7. It's the most stable. It's the most elaborated. You have the most options. You have the most, like you have Facebook. They control you there in Facebook. But if you take Telegram made by the Russians, the Russians know how to resist. You have your own permissions and your own access points of how you control the people going in your room in Telegram. In Facebook, you just you just know then you can't do shit, man. You just get fed to what they want over there, and Telegram is way better in that uh, option uh, uh, angle of in view. But never mind. Okay, uh, have a nice night or day.